Hell yeah, what's up guys? It's Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I'm back in the heartbeat tool H.KI or HK, and I want to talk to you about Dragon's Dogma 2. This game comes out in about seven days, six if you're on the eastern side of the world, I believe, and holy smokes, it looks awesome. And not only that, they've got a great new intro to Dragon's Dogma 2, or welcome to Dragon Dogma 2 video, pardon me, that's a little bit better way to put it. And it's narrated by Ian McShane. We're talking the guy from John Wick. I mean, Al Swearingen from Deadwood. Mr. Wednesday from American Gods. This is an awesome trailer. It's got some awesome moments. And it looks like a great game. So let's kick off using the Heartbeat tool and take a look here. All right, here we go. Move. A world touched by magic. A symphony of myth and reality. An everlasting saga of hearts set ablaze. I mean, is that not a great voice or what? Come on, guys, give me a break here. So on the right side here, I'm going through the heartbeat tool, and these are the moments that I've selected, and these are the names that I've given them. So let's skip forward a few seconds here to John Wick, Al Swearingen in Deadwood. You'll, he you'll hear the voice. Lend me a moment, and I'll tell you a story of a fantastical realm. Wow. All right, here we go. So this trailer or this, I guess, welcome video is broken up into three parts. It's got the hero. The second part is about the two nations. And the third part is about the monster. So there's three separate parts. Let's kick off here with single combat. No mortal would dare to dream of challenging the dragon in single combat. Yet, there is one who must. In a legendary tale doomed to repeat across the ages, the dragon chooses a worthy champion from... Yeah, that's you, by the way. <laughs> that's your job as the Arisen. Uh, let's get forward here to 112 and let's look at the uh, Arisen and what your role is in this game. Wrenching the beating heart from their chest and okay. forging a being known as the Arisen. Right, so the heart gets ripped out, and it looks like it goes down the dragon's gullet. That's a rough way to start life. That's a rough way to start off as a hero. But, uh, hey, it is what it is. All right, so let's go forward to a minute 31. And this one I've called Don Quixote vibe. I'm getting some real good Don Quixote vibes off this moment here. And answer the call to take up arms in search of the dragon who stole their heart. Literally, it literally stole it and ate it. And I guess it joins you with the dragon in Destiny or something like that. Pretty dark, not going to lie about that. <laughs> but anyways, let's keep going here. Uh, this is also not a single player. Well, it's a single player game, but it's not a single or a solitary journey. Let me show you what I mean here. But the path of the Arisen is not a solitary journey. For they are granted access to the rift. The and no, they're not talking about that video game that came out like 10 years ago or 15 years ago called The Rift. Red, connecting worlds. I see you recognize my work, Arisen. Where they can summon mystical beings from parallel realities. The loyal and hardworking pawns. Okay, so the name Pawn, that doesn't really work too well for me. That just seems like a, a kind of like a cop-out, like, uh, you know, there's kings and there's pawns. But hey, you know what? So be it. Uh, we're going to skip forward a bit now here. You can see just already this, some of the cool open world adventures, your vibes you're getting from this. Let's go to part two where, where he talks about two nations. In pursuit of the beckoning dragon, the Arisen and their pawns set foot across two nations as disparate in terrain as they are in their ways of life. Cool. In Vermont, a fertile land cradled by alpine peaks and rolling hills, the fortress city stands as a bastion of prosperity and security. Now listen to this. Cascading waterfalls and serpentine rivers flow throughout the countryside, feeding into fruitful farms where a feeling of abundance permeates the fresh air. That is borderline poetic. Good kudos to the writers for that serpentine rivers and fruitful this that and the other you could even hear the alliteration in there 
very cool. But anyways, guys, let's skip forward a bit more here. We're going to go now to the next area. Let's take a look at that. And it ain't nice and green and verdant like this one. Is connecting precarious outposts. Here, the Arisen is not an esteemed sovereign, but an outsider. Yeah, a little different. Their pawn companions believe to be a source of grave misfortune. Patal's rulers are not of human lineage, but rather Bistran priestesses who worship the lambent flame. Wow. For the Bistran believe its sacred fires shield them from the calamity of the dragon. Right, so, um, yeah, I guess that gives you a little bit of the lore going around the different types of creatures. Pretty cool, not going to lie about it. Uh, let's take a look at the elves in this in, in this video. <laughs> you'll see, there's elves coming up. What can I say? It feels like Lord of the Rings, but you'll see. Meanwhile, outside the reaches of human and beastron, hidden within the depths of the forest, an ancient sect of elves resides in seclusion, speaking in a tongue known only to them and avoiding contact with other races. All right, I get some Lord of the Ring vibes there, except these elves are shut-ins and <laughs> just don't get out of the forest, if you know what I mean. They're kind of like the pygmies from, uh, from the National Geographic books from the 70s. If you're old, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyways, guys, the other thing I want to talk to you about is the choices you make in this, in this game. Apparently, choices matter. Let's take a look. On their journey, the Arisen will navigate through conflicts between species and the complexities of culture, faith, and history in each land. Cool. The choices the Arisen makes will shape not only their future and that of those with whom they interact, but the future of the world itself. So the vibes I'm getting from this is that this is not just a, you know, select a b c or d and they all kind of lead to the same thing apparently uh it's open world and your choices do matter i didn't play the first one so if any of you guys have played the first one and want to weigh in on that let me know in the comments below but it looks pretty damn good now guys i'm going to finally finish it off here with the different monsters let's take a couple look at they've got a lot of monsters in this game but let's take a look at some of the some of the big ones the arisen's odyssey is fraught with peril Yikes. For the world is home not only to human and beastren, but to all manner of monsters, hungering to defeat the hero and their pawns. So there are some of the monsters, but it gets a little crazier because apparently the nights are, are even like worse. Like the daytime, there's the big monsters of the day, but at night, they got some guys and gals coming out. Skeletons, ghosts, undead. Let's take a look at that. You can expect a busy night. Skeletons, ghosts, an undead rise from their slumber. Ah! A single undead, murmuring to itself adrift in memories of its living past, is a haunting sight. Yeah, how cool is that? I've seen some comments uh, in, in uh, on one of the websites that that some people got early access to try out the first few hours and. They said, yeah, don't go out at night. <laughs> so uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's referring to what we're seeing here, but uh, it looks pretty damn impressive. Last thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at the Minotaur, the Medusa, and then the Soaring Griffin, then we'll call it a day. The Minotaur's trampling hooves. The oh. Medusa with its petrifying gaze. I've woken up to worse. And the Dulahan's ghastly severed head will strike fear in even the most stout-hearted i mean really guys that just looks awesome and then finally another moment here is there's a griffin Let's take a <sighs> slay the soaring griffin <laughs> and overpower the bronze giant talos so i'm even getting some of that greek mythology vibes in there and then finally the last moment is called moment 19 so i didn't update it so i'm just going to harrowing shoops i'm going to show you how easy it is to use the heartbeat tool so i'm just going to call this one instead of the moment 19 i'm just going to call the dragon and then hit save and now let's click on the final moment at 720 here with the indomitable dragon the culmination of both their destinies welcome to Dragon's Dogma 2. 
All right, though. Th so there you have it. This game looks fantastic. I think I'm going to pre-order it. I've been itching to play an RPG for a while now, and, you know, I don't have lots of time, but this one looks like a good game I can sink my teeth into. Let me know what you think about this game, what you think about the preview in the comments below. I'll be back soon with some more heartbeat moments. Thanks for watching.